Welcome to the last episode vlog in this series of dark mode because <laughs> it's not dark. What is it now? Uh, quarter past seven in the evening here and it's still beautifully sunny. Uh, so it makes sense to finish uh, this season off um, and boy have I got an episode for you to finish off with two knits on two locations because I wanted to make it special and go out on location and the first knit is this one that I'm wearing for you now. This is what I call my Game of Thrones coat um, and it's a pattern by Katia Yarns. And I arranged a photo shoot with a friend called Alexander, uh, who is a photographer, and we went on to two locations. And this one, because it was kind of Game of Thrones style, we went off into the woods. So let's kick off straight away and let me show you this pattern, my Game of Thrones coat. Sutton Heath, everyone. There's Alex. Hey. Little Wayne. Look, me and my Game of Thrones cardigan having a shoot. We wanted it mean and moody, and it's now bright and sunny. It's a beautiful day. It's probably going to be the hottest day so far this year. There. We're off to take some pictures. I had fun in the woods. So this pattern, it's a Katia pattern, and it was in one of their books. Um, you can buy it online. Uh, I'll put the, the link in the description below. And uh, just, there was just something about it that just uh, re really appealed to me. I think it, maybe it was the color as well, but, but this idea of a, a, a wool coat, and um, it's lovely. It's in Aran weight. It was done in Katia, um, merino Aran, but you could use any Aran. Uh, and it is mostly stocking stitch, but as I say, it has this nice um, rib, uh, two by two, I think that is here at the front, and my, my collar, um, lovely with my little pin there. And it's just so lovely and warm. But I could probably get away with wearing this down the high street, perhaps more so than the, the Harry Styles card. <laughs> um, but it's lovely, and as I say, it was great fun to, to go out and shoot. I knew I wanted to do something different for the, for the last uh, uh, vlog in this series, and I thought, yes, I'll have those two knits and go out on a photo shoot. So, how are things with you all? I know the, um, the, the feed that's been coming through from YouTube has probably been uh, bombarding you with sewing bee, so this is probably quite a refreshing change for some of you who are, are, are knitters and crocheters and not into sewing. Uh, I do hope that those videos don't uh, um, overwhelm you too much. Uh, it's 10 weeks stint, we're on week three already. Uh, so it soon goes by, but I know many of you are sewing, sewing bee fans too, so I hope you enjoy that content. And what about the new videos with Carol too? Going into more detail of the techniques that arise from each episode of Sewing Bee. 
and that's been fun to do. Learned so much from Carol, having you know a master tailor, a, 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 a couturier uh, on hand to talk about the the techniques that have come up in each episode. It's been fascinating, and she's got an eye. She'll go, oh, well, that's not quite right, or oh, oh you need to do it like this, uh, or, or here's a new way of doing it. Uh, it's been fascinating to learn. So if you want to find more about sewing techniques, uh, then um, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put the links in the description, but you'll be able to see them. It's called All Gathered Up with me and Carol, as well as our unpicked episodes with Meeting and Anya. It's great to be back with them. It would be nice to be together in the shop, but uh, alas, we can't. But um, good news though on the shop front, the shop is open. Hence why another reason why uh, it's, uh, you know, you've got to get out of the potting shed now because I'm not at home. Um, it's, it all seems a bit sort of uh, un, uncozy in here now, but uh, everything's moved back to the shop. The shop is open, uh, though it does seem a bit weird. I don't think people are up for browsing just yet. They're all up for going out for a cup of tea and a coffee and meeting with a friend because we can do that here in the UK. We can meet up outside uh, in a cafe and have a cup of tea. We can't go inside yet. The pubs and cafes can't take indoor seating until May. May the something. Um, but So it's a slow return back to normal, but it's lovely being back at the shop. Let me go to Stuart in the shop uh, and, uh, and, and give you a shop update. Welcome to the shop. Oh, it's good to be back. <laughs> oh, it's just, I mean, I know I've been in sort of sporadically in over lockdown, but it's nice to be back when, uh, if I look out the window, there are cars parked outside. There is traffic going up and down. People are walking by to go to the tea shop next door. It is slowly, slowly sort of going back to the way it used to be. Anyway, enough of that. Let's do some shop talk. <gasps> Look, can you see? <laughs> Got posh new apron now. I feel a bit more professional. I mean, my hair doesn't look very professional, but I feel a bit more professional. And also, can you spot my, my peck there? I'll show you here. I'm Barbara the pin badge. I've got some pin badges made. The wool patch pin badges. And I spent a long time designing these and, and finding the factory to make them lot of research and I'm really really pleased. I've gone for the pin badges without cardboard backing because I just thought that's complete waste because if you buy a pin badge you are literally going to take the badge off that cardboard backing and bin it aren't you so I can't be doing with that needless needless waste. But look I've also got two pins on the back Oh, hello camera. <laughs> so it won't, so it won't wobble and turn upside down. So I've got my pin badge there. These will be for sale soon. Just got to pop them up on the website. So that will be great. So you can have a wool patch pin badge on your project bag. Um, so yes, I've got my pin badge there and I've got my apron. So I, I feel all ready for, for, for reopening up. So let's do a quick look at some new products because we haven't done that for a long while um, uh, for me being in the potting shed. Art Gallery Fabrics. Have any of you used fabric from Art Gallery Fabrics? Probably dress making fabric. Uh, I, I remember Janet from Great British Sewing Bee Series 6. She uses Art Gallery Fabrics a lot. Well I've got a collection in from Art Gallery Fabrics. I think I've said art gallery fabrics too many times and now it sounds a bit weird. Soften the volume. Let's pick these up. Oh, look at that. Isn't that nice. And what I've found instantly with art gallery fabrics is it's a really lightweight cotton. A hundred percent cotton, but the, the, the magic number, the grams, per square meter GSM is a lot lower. It is a hundred and, what did I write? 125 grams per square meter. Now most quilting fabric 
which still is 100% cotton, can be, uh, what, 170, 180, 200. Some can be two, just over 200. Um, some uh, heavier cotton, almost denim canvas, can get 220, 250. But most of my patchwork cotton quilt, what, which they call quilting cotton, is 180 to 200. So this to be 125 is noticeably different. You would notice, if you're a big quilter and you use fabric a lot and you go to touch art gallery fabrics, you'll go, ooh. And it's kind of called a quilting poplin, a poplin quilting weight. So it is thinner for sure, but so soft. So this is called Soften the Volume. So we've got one with a uh, beautiful, can you see that? Beautiful um, wheat sh sheaves, wheat sheaves. Yeah, I think that's what they call them. Wheat, corn, corns, <laughs> something like that. Then you've got this lovely handwritten one with s scribbles on notes, like things from the diary. Um, and some sort of text, Emily Dickinson. Mm, don't know who that is. And then a lovely blender one. More beige, on beige that one. And then this lovely modern, fresh, white with little arrows. Fabulous collection. Uh, and as I say, when you then hold them up like that, doesn't that look adorable? The first of many from Art Gallery Fabrics. Going to see how it goes. Um, brilliant to order from. I don't have to have nine or 10 bolts. There was no minimum order. So from a fabric point of view, really good. Um, and we'll see how it goes. I've made some bundles up uh, and uh, there we are. So that's Art Gallery Fabrics. You can check the link out in the description below or you can just go to the website. So great, so I'm gonna put that on the shelf. Now a lovely new collection that's come in from my haberdasher. It's called Hemline Gold. And what's good about Hemline Gold? No plastic. No plastic at all in their packaging. So this company has er eradicated it completely. So it came in paper bags, brown paper bags. Um, with the sticky label on and uh, the packaging itself there's no plastic there's no plastic window like they do on some you know what's the point of that plastic window uh, so there's it's literally just cardboard and um, uh, like, like this is a thimble that would often be in plastic and it's just paper around the back brilliant lovely but it's there's a premium feel to it, hence the gold. And look at this. This is a rotary cutter with a gold blade. Oh. Oh. You can get a nice sewing kit. Look at that sewing kit. With loads in it as well. And look at these. I love the pair of snips to have near your sewing machine. Now, obviously there is plastic there, but that's for your, for your cover to protect. But there's no plastic, it didn't come in a plastic wrapping. There is no plastic. So, so it does look a bit flimsy, but do you know what? For the, I'll sit on the shelf, it will hang like that. Absolutely perfect, no need for that plastic. So good on Hemline for releasing a range with no plastic in its packaging whatsoever. Um, so I've got quite a few of it in stock. I mean, those fabric clips, I mean, those black and gold, aren't they? Just wonderful. There is a lot more in the range. I'll slowly get that in and I will then phase out the other basic haberdashery range because um, if that helps, you know, cut down on plastic, if we can all die a little bit, it's brilliant. So I'm really pleased with that. Oh, look what else I bought. Gutterman. This is for me now. <laughs> this is for me and not the shop. <laughs> Look, overlocking thread. 
I thought, well, I can't keep making everything with the white that came with the overlocker. Um, I need other colors, so I bought, I got loads. So I could change my overlocking thread for once. So I, rather than making a t-shirt with navy and then having white stitching <laughs> showing. <laughs> Now, have you been watching The Sewing Bee? Uh, I, your, your notifications have probably been rammed with all the videos that we keep doing weekly for the moment, but it's only another uh, seven weeks to go. Um, but I've learned lots of um, tips, especially from Carol. Have you seen our videos that me and Carol do, um, where we go into detail uh, of looking at techniques that came up from each episode of The Sewing Bee? Well, they used a clapper in one and Carol explained all about it and I've now stocked them. Look at that. A tailor's clapper. You hold it. You, you, you iron your seam, press your seam open and then clap. And it draws out the moisture and it leaves for a beautifully crisp seam. Cool, isn't it? So really pleased with that. Now, let's go for a little tour. Let's go and look at that. Right, I'm just gonna pick you up and take you off here. Oh, here we go. Look at the quilts there, look. Ooh, ah, shiver my timbers, ooh, ah. here look oh now that's the new yarn there look at that and some is variegated color lab 100% British wool and there's my gold display the new haberdashery line look at that gold lame fabric gold mohair oh I mean just wonderful colors oh I love that one wonderful to be back but um well do you want to see the mess that is <laughs> at the back here oh I can't wait till I have the ladies back having tea and coffee all day oh miss them uh, oh did I show you the curtain mustn't forget the curtain this is me and Jen's wonderful work over lockdown. Can you remember out the back? Let's move Mrs. Lady over. That's where all the yarn is kept. And it was just unsightly seeing those cardboard boxes. But now look, wonderful curtain. We made that in lockdown. I pieced these together. Jen then made loads of log cabin squares, blocks sewed them all together and then look -da, it covers up the back room oh, wonderful isn't it thanks Jen for that we have great fun doing that hopefully Jen will be able to come back soon oh let's pull that out and we can then go back to our fun days cleaning together um you can see this bit of a mess over there really lovely to talk to you from the shop uh, but that's about it, so I'll hand you back over to Stuart in the potting shed for the last part. See you. Bye. It was nice, wasn't it? It, was, it seemed kind of proper, me there in the shop. Uh, it's been, it has been lovely being back. Let's go to the gallery and see all your wonderful finished makes for the last time.
was that? Some stunning makes, as always. Been overwhelmed with all your pictures that you've either sent to me or that you've tagged me on Instagram with hashtag the wool patch. It's been phenomenal seeing all your makes. Um, and when we come back with a new season from the shop, I'm sure the gallery will be back uh, in its rightful place because it's just wonderful seeing what what you all do and it's inspired so many people because we've got better at putting in what it is you're making and some of you included the the designer and the pattern name so people can write it down and perhaps do it themselves so thank you for doing that and uh, here's another finished make <laughs> i feel like sue cook from um children need can you remember was it sue cook was that her name Yes, with Terry Wogan years ago. Um, they used to start that fundraising from like seven all the way through to one, and she would uh, every sort of two hours or so she would come out in a new in a new frock. Well, that's like me now. So this is me in the special hand knit that Colin has done for me. Colin, it's phenomenal. Look at it, beautiful. Really, really. Um, it's actually it's cooling down a bit here in the bottom shed actually, so it's quite nice to wear now. But yes, I think you might have seen a sneak peek of it in a couple of, of vlogs ago. You saw his uh, painting uh, of the design, of the outline uh, of, of what this pea jacket was going to look like. Well, it's done, it's finished, and it is phenomenal. Um, so I had another photo shoot with Alexander. The same day we had two locations. Well, this location is a... Oh, stunning location uh, on a beach is called Shingle Street. It is wonderfully bleak and I thought yes that will be great for our, our final vlog for a photo shoot there with Alexander. Um, I wanted it uh, as I said bleak so I was hoping for a dull day, rainy, hopefully windy so we could get some really cool stylized shots. Yes it was that day where, where you've just seen me in the woods it was boiling hot and sunny, not a cloud in the sky. It was like, oh. but it was lovely being on the beach. So uh, take a look at this little sequence of me in my pea jacket knitted for me by the wonderful Colin. Colin, you amaze me with your skills. Again, as I was saying earlier, I'm so lucky to have people in the village who are who are just well, who are not only just talented, but who who like doing things for for me in the shop, and we get to show off their skills as well. We get to all craft together. You remember, what's the most impressive thing about this is that Colin made it up from scratch. There, there is no pattern. He just designed it and, and created it. And what I love about it is it's got crocheting as well because you've got the, the front and then the button band, <coughs> as you can see there, 
is crocheted on it's incredible absolutely incredible the skills there so thank you very much colin uh, great way to end the, uh, the season with two wonderful knits to show off to you all the shop is doing fine really pleased it's progressing well can you believe it it's been five years <gasps> yep the lease is up it finishes and i am re-signing woohoo and i'm going to be in long melford uh, in the wall patch for another five years but i have decided if it doesn't get if it doesn't make more money and i, I and as in enough for me to pay some bills uh, and to contribute um uh then I, I think we will call it a day um but that's five years away that's a that's a hell of a lot of time though saying that i know how quick the months go can you believe it it's nearly may already Ooh. but for five five more years we've got of knitting sewing crafting and making and vlogging thank you for coming back uh, it helps grow the shop because uh, the, that's the idea the YouTube audience um, and what revenue we get from the ads goes into the shop and then the shop grows so let's see if we can keep growing it for the next five years because uh, I'm absolutely loving it uh, all these knits I get to wear I get to make oh, I will finish my, my um, yoke that I'm doing at the moment very very soon so that's going to be exciting and oh it's just it's just a lovely life lovely life and i love reading and getting involved in your comments too so keep commenting so it's been it's, yeah it's just great absolutely great so until the new season keep well and hopefully i will see you soon back at the shop with a new vlog and a new series bye